being the best broiler poultry farmer is not enough. The question is, at the end of the day, can you sell your broilers? You know, marketing is the bloodline of every business. After all, it's the ultimate goal of production, to sell and make profit. Yes, it has never been easy for any new broiler poultry farmer until they gain experience. For instance, I used to buy things cheaper in China, fiscal products, and then flip them for cash in Lagos, Abuja, or Portacot, cities of Nigeria. So using social media advertising. So I thought selling broilers would be the easiest thing to do. After all, broiler is one of the cheapest source of protein. So if you are not a vegetarian, certainly there must be need for you to buy broiler one day or another until I tried a test advert trying to sell egg online. Then I realized it is against advertising policies of most of these social media handles to advertise sales of animal or animal products. But you can sell products that animals themselves will use. That's unfair, right? That was when I knew I had to go the traditional route. I had to follow the local way that people have been doing it in the past before me. But along the way, I learned six effective ways of doing this. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing six effective ways of selling your broilers. And the video is starting right now. Before we talk about how to effectively sell your broilers, there are, there are psychology to selling broilers. In fact, to any market, and it has to do with the market perception. So for that reason, I'm going to be telling you the few things you need to do to improve your market. Number one, you need to improve the quality of your product. You can't bring rubbish to the market and expect people to buy. No. You need to improve the quality of your product. You can't bring sick bed to the market and expect people to buy. No. It's painful in this modern time that a lot of people don't know how to raise broilers. Some people believe you just get the broilers and you feed them for two months, three months, four months. Some people even feed their broilers for five months before they sell. And at the end of it, they ask, how much profit are you making from selling these things? And then some people see broiler production as a game of gamble. It's a risky venture. You are not certain whether something will come out, but it's just the risk you are willing to take. Let me just take this risk. It might work. It might not work. That's the reason why I created a course called the Broiler Video Course. It's a course that will guide you from inception. If you are checking if broiler farming is something you can do, Broiler Video Course will change your mindset and show you broiler farming is what you can do. The course guides you from the idea because it started from the planning phase. From the planning, we'll talk about the structural planning, we'll talk about the financial planning. The course will guide you to plan yourself financially, to know your capacity before you decide to know, okay, I can be able, my capacity can carry so so number of beds till six weeks. So this is a number I need to bring in and start raising. The broiler video course will also teach you the preparations to make before and during the reason of this base and it's a video course it's not a write-up or a whatsapp join this group join that where i'll say do this tomorrow do this no it's a video course where even the day-to-day -day activities you need to do the broiler video course will guide you to day-to-day -day activities and the good thing about it is that everything that you are being told to do there is a reason for it and in the video course it's mentioned and in the video course I'm only teaching you how to raise these broilers for six weeks. Converting six weeks to days is just 42 days. And you will get nothing less than 3 kg on the average. And then at the end of the rearing period is marketing. The broiler video course will teach you how to market because there are some sales scripts that I'll be giving to you which somehow will not be mentioned in this video. And it's just only left for people who enroll to the course. Who is the broiler video course for? It is for a new broiler farmer who has no idea about what to do about broiler farming. Who else is this course for? This course is also for people who have been in the business for some time, but they know that they are doing some things wrong. The course will guide you better to make you a better broiler farmer. The next thing you need to do to improve your market is to maintain a good storage facility. Now, most people, broilers are, in fact, not most people, broilers generally are best consumed fresh. That's why most people prefer to buy them live, keep them until they are ready to use them, so that they will just slaughter it and use it fresh. 
But should there happen to be a time when there is need for you as a farmer to slaughter this best yourself, you need to maintain a good storage facility so that the best, the, the best, the slaughtered best will still maintain, be maintained fresh all through. Then the third thing you need to also do to improve the quality of your market is to join a union, a farmer's union. Farmer's union is where farmers come and make agreements and they stand by the agreements. There are people known as the middlemen in this broiler business. They are also known as the, sub, um, the distributors. They come to your farm, they buy it at a certain price, and then they go to the market and resell it at their own price. Their main aim is to make profit. Also, you as a farmer, your main aim is to make profit. But do you know that these middlemen have a strong union? That in their union, they fix prices to sell a particular size of bed. So as a consumer, when you come to get your broilers and this person is telling you that the price of this broiler is this and you leave the person's shop and you are going to the next person's meat shop, the next person there is also telling you the same price. In fact, the person is telling you a price that is higher than the previous person, but if you have a stronger bargaining power, it will come down and still be the same price of the other middleman. They have a strong union. So farmers need to have this union in the sense that farmers will fix price. Farmers in a particular location will fix price. No matter where any other person goes, no matter any farm that the next person goes to, the next farm is still selling the same thing this particular farm is selling theirs. So to improve your market, you need to join a strong poultry association or union within your location. The third thing you need to do to improve the quality of your market is to create public awareness. Public awareness has to do with educating people on the health benefits of consuming broilers. It's a psychology. It's psychological. When you're educating people on the health benefits of consuming broilers, subconsciously, you're making them know that oh, the next meat I need to buy is broilers. And also, you also need to educate them since broilers happens to be the cheapest source of, both, um, of protein. So there is need for you to create this public awareness about educating people on the need for consumption of broiler meat. And then finally, the next thing you need to do to improve your market is to know your capacity. You know that you can only be able to sell 100 broilers. One, then why are you stocking 1,000? Is it because you have the money to rear 1,000? If you don't have a way to sell all of them off, but you know you can be able to sell 100, 200, please, please and please, just make sure you don't stock more than what your capacity is. Now, the next thing I need to mention is to... There are a few misconceptions that people have about sales of broiler. Many farmers, they believe that, um, number one, they believe that broiler sales should be left to the off-takers. That's the middlemen who come to the farms to buy them in bulk and then sell. But that's very wrong because as a poultry farmer, selling your broiler, in fact, you should be the head sales rep of your produce. You understand? And when you know how to sell this, you also teach your farm attendants to also learn how to do this alongside with you before you consider the off-takers to help you clear everything. And then second misconception that people have about broiler sales is that you only start selling your broilers when they are matured. Let's say you've learned how to raise your broilers for 42 days and then you think that you should start selling your broilers when they are on at the end. That's on the 42nd day, that's when you should start selling your broilers. No, that's very wrong. It's wrong. Sales of broilers start from day one. If you are not doing a business of brood and sell, there are people who just raise broilers for two weeks. They brood it and then they sell it to those farmers that don't want to pass through the stress of brooding. Those people have already sold us. You understand? That's within two weeks. But if you are selling yours as a matured broiler, you need to start pre-selling your, your potential customers ahead of time. And the first set of potential customers you have are the contacts in your phone. That brings us to the first effective way of selling. There is something we we'll do here in the farm. When I get broilers from day one, I I do post it on my WhatsApp status. That's to my personal contacts. You understand? Okay, something happened during the when we were raising the best for the Christmas. You understand? Broilers that will normally get day old broilers at 400 naira, 400, 500 or something naira. Um, during towards the six weeks to the Christmas market, they were selling day old chicks for 870 naira. So when I brought these broilers, the first thing I wrote on my status was, Kai, what's wrong with this hatchery safe? I'll be the breeder stock, the chop good. 
How would they go to sell? How would they be selling the old broilers for 870 naira? My contacts are seeing this WhatsApp status, and somehow I'm pre selling them. I'm subconsciously letting them know that the Christmas broiler sales will be expensive since the day old happens to be this high. That certainly means that the feed will be high and then the final sales will be high. And also another thing that I do that works very well is during the brooding period around 1 a.m. when I come in to check the bears, 2 a.m. as in very early hours in the morning when I come to check the bears, you know, we are brooding them with lights and there is 24 hours light for them. I do normally take short clip videos and then I put it on WhatsApp status. So sometimes people ask, guy, you know they sleep. You understand? I will say, how will I sleep when I'm brooding chicks? Subconsciously, they already know that I have chicks. At times, they are the ones that will be contacting me around the fourth week. How far I won't buy a broiler, I want to buy. Because you've already started pre-selling them gradually and subconsciously, they know you have broilers. So certainly, when they want to buy broilers, they start from who their friend is, depending on you guys' relationship anyway. So you need to start the sales of your broilers from day one. You should start pre-selling your contacts as in your contact list especially the ones staying nearby you need to start pre-selling them now the second effective way to sell your broilers is you need to create awareness that your poultry is located in this particular community it's painful to see that someone will want to buy broiler and the person will come out transport him or herself to a very long distance to the market just to go and buy broilers when you already have broilers somewhere in the same community What's the reason for this? Many of the times, they don't know that there is a broiler poultry farm nearby. So you need to, you need to create awareness to let people know that there, are, that there is a broiler poultry farm within the community. So that anytime they want to buy a broiler, the first place they come to for the broiler is to come to your farm gate and knock. Please, I want to buy a broiler. Or maybe you have a good storage facility, so you do dress broilers and preserve them in the freezer. When they want to buy a dress broiler, they first of all come to you because they know that if I go to the farm to buy, it will be cheaper than going to the market. So when you create a good public awareness, you will notice an organic traffic. People come to the gates to buy. Okay, paraventure they come to buy and the broilers are not matured enough to be sold. Maybe the broilers are still four weeks old. We tell them, please, um, we'll start selling our broilers from next week, which is the fifth week. You get the point. So... Creating public awareness to let people know that there is a poultry farm nearby is also a good and effective way to market your broilers. Now, the third way to market your broiler is to network. Network with fellow farmers. There have been farmers who have been in this business before you. So they know some off-takers, they know some middlemen. They can link you up with some middlemen to come and pack your entire base. You understand? Um, last, sometime last week, someone called me that is having issues selling his broilers and the longer they stay the more he spends money away from his budget in feeding them so what did i do i just asked because i knew the person stays somewhere in nasarawa so i just asked which local government do you stay he told me and told me the specific location good thing i happen to know a a distributor i happen to know a middleman sunny sunny is my favorite guy in that location what i just did was send him sunny's number and then I tested Sammy and said, please, I sent your number to a farmer. Assist him. So when the farmer called him, Sunny acknowledged that I've already informed him, but that at the moment he has his shop filled with broilers, so he can't come now and buy. When the guy told me, the next person I sent him his number is, is a frozen store guy. You understand? I asked him, can you sell your best on a frozen level? He said, yes. I said, okay, call this guy. Call this number. Tell them that you have broilers for sale so certainly if they need maybe they need that week or they need next week they will tell you how many cages they need and you guys will negotiate how much you are selling per kg you get the point so there is need for you to network with your fellow farmers this is not it's not an island you are not a lone wolf you understand and also if you have a good relationship with your fellow farmers that you are networking with the farmer has no reason to see you as a competition that's directing people to you might make them lose those people you get the point so because and i'm not saying i'm sharing this with you i'm not seeing you as a potential competition because i know how i handle my customers i know how i reach them i have personal relationship with them you understand and even if i happen to lose some of them to you because we are in the same location i still have room to get more 
you get the point so there is need for you to network with other farmers and for you that an older farmer is helping you should also create a room to help the newer and upcoming farmers to also be able to sell their produce now that brings us to the fourth effective way of selling that's the use of middlemen I know why I didn't put this middleman as the first one because I want you to learn how to do this yourself. You need to learn how to pre-sell. You need to learn how to sell yourself. So that's why I'm bringing the middleman to be the number four effective way of selling. When you have tried to do these sales yourself, when you've tried to do these sales yourself, there comes a time that um, some of them are still remaining. But you need to get rid of this best. That's where you involve the middleman. Now, what the middleman do is they are reselling these things to make profit for themselves you understand since they are reselling it to make profit for themselves that means you the farmer your initial expectation of profit margin you need to drop it a little bit and then sell to them so that they can be able to add something and then resell in the market for instance let's say your cost of production happened to be 2500 naira and initially you had a mind to sell each bed at 4,000 naira so that you'll be making a 1,500 naira profit. For the sake of the middleman, you can reduce your, your expectation. Say, okay, you are giving it to the middleman at 3,500 naira. So you are losing 500 naira. And then when this middleman take it, they can even increase their own price to 4, 5. They can increase it to 5,000. That's... What they are selling is none of your business because they have their own selling tactics. They have their capacity and they help you as a farmer as well to offtake. So that is also the need for you to have a good relationship with most of these middlemen. And the secret there is that the more middlemen you have, the faster it is for you to sell off. For instance, currently I'm raising, I'm raising 850 broilers currently. When I, that's this period I'm shooting this video, I'm raising 850 and today happened to be their 14th day. I won't want to brag, but I can comfortably hit my chest and tell you that these broilers now, I'm going to be raising them from the fifth week, I'll start selling them. And before the sixth week, I'll finish selling them. And the good news is that I already have customers on ground waiting. I have a pizza store who said he wants to buy all. Now I have middlemen, I've already informed that I have. And also... I'm pre-selling people on my contact list and at the same time getting to know more middlemen in different locations so that should anybody that I'm expected to pick best from me happen to disappoint me, I give it, I push it immediately to the next person. It's better that I disappoint the customers who want to buy from me than I spend more money keeping this best. But if I happen to disappoint a customer who I've already promised to sell broilers to, I don't end up disappointing the person anyway because what I will do is to call the next farmer and say, please, I have people who want to buy broilers and then I will redirect them to the next person or I go there myself, get this base, resell them to the person that somehow I don't want to disappoint. That's business. All we, know, all we are trying to do here is just to make sure that we sell off and make profit. So if it happens to you don't have the produce that you are selling, you can go to the next person's shop and pick and then sell. Number five, the number five effective way of um, selling off your broilers is to, to put your feet on the ground. You need to go meet most of these outlets that sell food, like the catering services, who have the restaurants, who have the fast foods. You go meet them, you tell them you have broilers for sale in case they need. If you are the type that do have complimentary card, you drop it with them. If you have a little... Um, What's it called? A little banner, a little sticker, you give it to them so that it will be a constant reminder for them. And also you share your contact with them and save theirs so that whenever they need, they call you. And if the period they call you happen to be when you have, you sell to them. But if you don't have, you don't just tell them you don't have. Instead, you refer them to someone else that have. They, they prefer to, many of these people prefer to hear, I don't have, but I can link you up to someone who will bring it for you. You get the point? So that next time they need, you will still be the contacts that they have in the back of their mind to call to assist them with getting these things but there is a catch to this if you know you are going to be a constant disappointment to these people because you know all the time you don't have broilers now if you know you are going to be a constant disappointment to these people reduce the number of them that you meet so that because when you disappoint them the first time i think they may not even give you the second time to disappoint them they will just forget about you 
and your fam. So make sure that you don't meet too much of these people. Just meet the few that you know that you may not disappoint. And in a situation you don't have, you tell them that you help them look for where they will get. You understand? Then you make calls. That's where that networking is also important. You help the other farmer sell their produce. Maybe you don't make any profit from that, but what you are doing is you are still, those outlets, you are helping, you are wetting their tongue. Keeping them on hold, waiting till the time you have your own to start selling to them. But when you don't have, you help the next farmer to sell to them. And then the sixth way to effectively sell your broilers is to, is to get the contacts of people who operate cold storerooms around your location. And then when you get their contacts, you give them a call that you have broilers for sale. And this is how you get their contacts. The first thing you do is just to open your open your Google app on your phone, either Android or iOS. Then on the search bar, you search for you type what you are looking for. Like for instance, I'm typing I'm typing cold store in Karu. I'm being specific because you might type cold store and it will show you all the stores in the in the world. So I'm being specific and then I click search and then wait a little. This pops up. What you are seeing here now are a list of cold storerooms that have already listed their businesses in Google Map. Like here we have Cold Hop, Orange Market, New Karu. We have Hassan Musen and then you can then when it's still loading, the network is bad, you scroll up or down. Then okay. Ah, I did a big mistake. Let me search it again. Now see, there is an icon here that is phone number. Then when you click this phone number, what Google does is to give you the phone number of that particular cold store. Then you dial their number, call them and tell them that you have broilers available for sale at um, dressed weight. Certainly you already know what um what's it called? The amount a kg is sold in your location. So that's the amount you'll be giving it to them. That's how to get the contact of code rooms because you know we are in a 21st century so everybody are listing their business on Google. Your own duty now is to utilize that tool on Google map, type for code room and then include your location. It will give you all the code rooms within your location that have already listed their businesses on Google map. You collect their number, give them a call that you have. There is a catch to this at times when I started doing this particular type of kind of getting contact and selling off my broilers. Um, there are some of them I would call and they would tell me that I called them very late because at the moment they just restocked and then what I would do is just say, okay, no problem. In case of next time, I would then save their number and some of them do call me back and say, I need 100 kg this week, I need 50 kg next week. If I happen to have bed that period, what I would do is to dress that amount of bed and send to them. And then if I don't, I will still do the same thing like wetting their tongue. I will look for the next farmer and say, guy, please, you have, can I get 100 kg from you? If the farmer happens to say, yes, I say, okay, see this particular code, I'm going to supply to them. This is the rate they're charging now. Now, I'm not being the middleman to collect the money, no. I'm transferring the business to the next farm. That's still part of the reason why you need to network with your fellow farmers. Then when I transfer it, due to what I've already done for the code room, the code room certainly will call me the next time to also tell me that they need. And I've been doing this. I have about seven code rooms I do supply. So that's just how we do some of these things. So my question also goes to how do you sell your broilers effectively? What are the simple tactics you are using? Feel free to share with us in the comment section of this video. Now, for the broiler video course, I'll be sharing the link in the description of this video for you to go assess it and then enroll into the course. That's it for this video, guys. See you next time.